I'm thrilled to have my old tractor going again. I had to have the engine rebuilt. Poor old soul spun a rod bearing, but I've got a new engine in it. It's running good and I'm really happy to have it back. I'm not having to borrow a tractor from my brother, which he was so gracious to let me borrow his and I sure do appreciate it. I've been working out the second floor joists for the cabin down at Paradise Point. I've got three of them worked out here. I've got one left and I'll have these ready to, to go. And round eight, as I've said, will cap over the A and C wall and it will have the pockets cut to accommodate the second floor joist. So I'll turn you around here and I'll finish the last one up. About a year ago, when I was working out the floor joist for our cabin, I did a video and there were some issues with the audio so I feel like I need to do that over and go through this again. What I'm using are seven by nines southern yellow pine for the floor joist. And what I've done, I've got it on my horses. Underneath this end, I have a wedge driven under there for it to set on to where it can pivot one way or the other. And I've come to the center of the, of the timber, the joist, and I've put my level and I'm checking to see if it's level and it is. And I've, I don't know just how this happened, but I put my level here and at the other end and both ends are level, uh, even without using a wedge. But if you don't have that unusual thing to happen to you, which is good, you would put uh, a wedge underneath here on your sawhorse, underneath the center of the timber so that it can tilt one way or the other. And you can go to the other end on the other horse and look at your level and watch it in the center of the timber and put a, a wedge under there so that you can wedge where it's going one way or the other, tilting one way or the other, and, and check your level. Now, I've got my level on here. It's already level without having to use a wedge, which just doesn't ever happen for me. And I can come down here at the end of the joist and put my level on there and check it to see what I need to do to true this end up. And to true this end up, to where they both are are the same as the center, which is level here. And just by putting my level on there, it's really, really close. And down here, it also is really close. It's just a little bit heavy on this side, which I can take care of with my hand plane. And so what I'll do, I'll get this surface, this, this is the side that will be seen, and I'll true both ends up where they're uh, true with each other. I have my hand plane set really, really light. Now I can check it with my level. And that's right on the money right there. So I'll do the same thing down here on this end. Just a slight, slight rise, just a little bit high on this side, which it's not gonna take much to have that right on the money. Set my level back up there. And it's there. It's, it's perfectly level with the other end. I'm going to use my big boy here to cut the end. Now this saw only cuts 6 and 5 sixteenths. Remember these, these timbers are 7 inches. So I'll have to finish it up with a hand saw. After I got this cut off, I came in three inches here and made my mark, which will be the control 
when I set this in the wall and also transferred it down the which is the top and the bottom also and as I work this side I'll still have this line uh, control line to uh, be able to tell where I'm at so for now since I've got this surface this side of it trued up I can roll this thing 180 and put this side on the top and I'll set my level underneath this to make sure that I have this this end that end true uh, with the level and then I can work this side and make it parallel with this surface here this side okay I've got it flipped over and I've got my level checking it down here on the first side that I did and I have it leveled back up now I can set my level on top of this surface here this side and I can see it's just a little bit heavy on this this side here so I can take my hand plane set really light and just planing towards the side that is heavy and I'm just taking just a little bit off at a time I've got my plane set really light check it with my level and that's getting really really close I'm going to put a straight edge on there and look make sure that it's real flat and it is it's it's in good shape so I can transfer my control line around to this side now I'm, I may have failed to mention the three inches is what will be pocketed into the uh, uh, log on a wall and C wall which will be the the header logs that go over the door and the window and I'll cut the pockets in those logs to accept the width and the height of this of these floor joists I've turned the joist to where I have the top up and I know that I have this side and this side over here parallel on both ends now I can take my framing square and I can lay it right up against the side right in here where the control is and set that on the top and make sure that this top is square with the sides and I like to go down through there and just spot check that just every little bit just every two or three feet to make sure that this top is square off the sides there's one more thing that I'll do to the top I'm going to take my little power planer and I've got my edge guide on there and I'm going to go down the top of this and just wrap it out just a shallow uh, groove I'll make a pass down and back and what that will do for me when the boards the floorboards go on top of the joist uh, if this is sitting in the sun and it starts to dry it might want to create a little bit of a hump here if I take that out in the center then the floorboards will uh, want to set on the edge and have a cleaner look when you're looking up from underneath to the bottom edge of the floor that it's setting real crisp and clean on the edge of the, the top of the joist all right this rabbit that i cut in there with my little planer is just about a 16th or a little bit less than a 16th below these two outside surfaces and i feel like that will take care of any any discrepancies or anything that might happen and let the floorboards touch on this edge and this this edge I've got over an inch and a half that they would actually be bearing on both sides of the joist I've turned the joist where the bottom is facing up and I need to check where this area is right here where it pockets into the wall with my square and I want this which will be the bearing part of the joist to be square off the the sides that I have trued up and that is right now you can see I had to do just a little bit of hand planing it was a little high on this side and I'll do the same thing at the other end and this joist will be ready to go with the exception of the chamfer that I'll put in there and I'll show you where I lay that out and do that I'm not sure how well you can see that but there's a mark right here 
and here just straight across, square across, eight inches back from the control. And I have my router set up with a three quarter inch chamfer bit. And I'll start eight inches from the control line or where the, the log will it'd be pocketed into the log. And I've marked it eight inches out. And I'll, I'll keep a nice crisp corner uh, eight inches out from the control and from there to the other end, which I'll do the same thing on, on both ends of the joist. And I'll stop at the other end eight inches from the control line and that chamfer will just kind of soften this sharp edge or the bottom side that uh, will be in the room. And it just gives it a nice de clean detail. I like the way that looks. This is actually the, the last joist but I put a one on it. I've kind of numbered backwards, four, three, two, one. And as I make my chart, as I mentioned, I'll put these numbers on the chart where they go, and I'll be able to keep up with the size of the pocket that I'll need to cut. Okay, we're getting ready to set the joist. If you can see, I've got a little groove cut in here on the end of the joist. It just so happens that one of our, or on both, a wall and C wall, we have an electrical hole drilled there and it just it catches in the end here so I've made a little V groove so we can still get wires down through there without any problem. Start easing it down. I have to back up just a little bit. They kind of want that to straight down in there. line on the side there.
I've got a 2 before sitting on top of the wall. I've got screwed down with a couple of torque screws. The last pocket is right here. Now I don't have the room with the hoist to be able to back up and set this last joist. So what we'll have to do with the help of Brother Wayne, we're going to set it right here, right up against this joist, and then I can turn the hoist similar to the way it is right now so that we can slide this, this last joist on top of this 2 before over here above the pocket. Then we can take the screws out and we'll just have to get our shoulders under it and pick it up and kick this 2 before off and let it slide right down in the pocket. I've done this before so I know it can be done. We'll do it. Okay, we've got all the joists up and we've got the lag bolts in them holding them down. I don't think they'll ever come out. I'm not afraid of them falling down. Got a good fit on the pockets. And the hoist here on this job has picked its last timber up. I'll have to take it apart and take it out. Oh, faithful. Mm -hmm.